iced coconut coffee. Now that might be the perfect drink. There's no way I could do a hot coffee. But here I get to enjoy a coffee with coconut. Well, it's day 17 and I haven't yet said good morning, so good morning. It's only a quarter to nine, so if you thought this was my 10 o'clock smoko, uh, you're wrong. Actually, you're not wrong. It's my 10 o'clock smoko at, at a quarter to nine. I got away early today, I got away at 5.20. I rode in the dark for about 40 minutes, uh, but again, I, was, I felt quite safe uh, with, my, with my lights. Um, I've only really started to feel the heat since I've stopped. Um, I think I'm a little dehydrated uh, uh, from yesterday. I don't know what these are, but eh, they taste all right. And they're sweet. And they fit. Yeah, I got away really well, 520. Um, but yeah, I'm... Yesterday's extra 25 kilometers that I wasn't expecting. I think it's, it's taken a bit out of me. Um, so yeah, that was 25 kilometers ridden in the middle of the day when um, yeah, I should have been standing under a cold shower. Uh, so I lost a lot of fluid then. I, I, I worked hard to try and um, keep drinking and I drank water. Um, uh, yesterday afternoon, last night, uh, yeah, but I'm feeling just flat, flat. I'm, I'm fidgeting on the bike, um, I can't relax, um, I'm hurting in places I don't normally hurt, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm pushing about 22k an hour on the flat, which is, it's alright, but it's not great. But I just can't bring myself to push any harder, and um, my pulse has barely hit 90 all, all morning. Um, yeah, so. so the low pulse um, for me, um, which is normal, but it should be more than 90 uh, in this heat, and um, yeah, I've been riding for about three hours. Um, so that's normally a sign that uh, yeah I'm, I'm dehydrated. Uh, so I've had this stop. Um, I'll scoff some more water after this beautiful coffee. I wonder if I should get another one. I wonder what the ladies inside would think if I ordered another one. So I've done 60 odd Ks, um, 60, nearly 62. If I've plotted out the map right, I've only got about 35 to go.
problem is, the longer I stay here, the hotter it gets. It's a real, um, yeah, sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Can I say that on Easter Sunday? But yeah, as with the whole ride, the more time you take stopping, looking at things, taking photos, shooting vid, launching the bomber. Um, yeah, the, the more time you take doing that, the more you draw the day out and then the hotter uh, the ride becomes. So it's just a balancing act. Um, but definitely I, I find when I'm rolling, I like to keep rolling, and I, I do find it hard to stop. And uh, I'm willing to put money down that this is the most boring interview, or bo most boring recording I've ever made. I'm not saying something. Can you hear the thunder? Well, good afternoon on day 17. I think it's safe to take them off for a little bit. That's a cloud. Cloud. They get clouds in Thailand. Uh, I've been in Thailand, uh, it'll be three weeks uh, tomorrow. Three weeks tomorrow. That's the first cloud I've seen. So I've gone three weeks, no rain, no clouds, just polluted skies, blue skies. Well, if yesterday was uh, a four quarter effort, uh, today was certainly a day of uh, two halves. Um, this morning I was, just like someone who'd never ridden a bike before. I, I just, my body wasn't quite into it. Um, my bum wasn't fitting on the bike seat properly. I fidgeted. Uh, yeah, it was awful. Uh, just not pleasant at all. Um, and I, I put that down to, um, yeah, that last push yesterday afternoon. When I left here this morning, uh, I just ordered my second uh, iced coconut coffee. I'm competing with a, a, a boat in the background. Uh, this is a working river. Um, yeah, I just ordered that second iced coconut coffee. It arrived and um, the road was fairly safe, so I actually took off uh, on the bike, holding that second one, and over the next you know, five, 10 Ks, whatever, um, down that, as, it, uh, uh, as the ice melted. So I don't know if it was the first one or the second one. I'm gonna assume that was the second one. It just gave me the spark I needed, and uh, the last 30 odd Ks, uh, went by quite well, um, and I got my pulse up over uh, over 100. I think it peaked at about 120. So, um, so like I said before, I, I think that low pulse is due to uh, dehydration and, um, and and hence the lack of energy. Like a noisy zinger. There's always one. Yeah, so the, the first, last 30 k's uh, went uh, went by quite well, um, and I've pulled into oh, I almost had it, almost had it. I think it's called Pak Panchon, Pak Panoram. I'm going to put it on the screen. Um, so I'm staying on this uh, working river um, in a really nice uh, place. 
uh, built on the, uh, the mangroves and um, it's about a 50 metre walk to a really cool restaurant. Uh, so I'm in a great location. As I said, it's only just gone midday. I've already showered, gone and had uh, a really good coffee. Um, and I'm back and I'm about to launch the bomber and uh, do a couple of rigging runs of uh, this area. So it was a really good ride. I, uh, I did not follow Kamut today. Uh, Kamut, Kamut does a fantastic job of taking you off the busy roads and uh, putting you down uh, country lanes and uh, really scenic uh, uh, routes. Um, but they're much slower going, they're longer because they're, they're quite windy and uh, I just didn't have, uh, have it in me today to, to do those extra Ks when I knew I could stick on a highway and, and uh, knock, knock the Ks over more quickly. So I followed the highway today, got in here, uh, yeah, not, about 90 Ks, maybe 95, um, <clears throat> and ended the ride feeling better than I did at the start of the ride, so that's a good sign. Tomorrow I've got uh, the choice of uh, doing a, a big ride, maybe 115, 120, to make the fourth day, which is going to be, be the most interesting day, make that one quite short so I can uh, uh, spend more time you know, taking photos and, uh, and launching the bomber, which is what I want to do. Um, uh, so if, if I do about 120 tomorrow, the next day I'll only be 60 k's into Hagi. Alternatively, I do about 90 tomorrow and about 90 the next day, which is not my preference uh, because then that will become a normal ride day and I want the, the following day to be a shorter day. My accommodation here is, is awesome. Uh, I, I will show you. Uh, I had the choice of downstairs, which was going to be about uh, twenty-four dollars, um, and I took the uh, the upstairs option, uh, so I can sit on the balcony like this and look out over there. And uh, I believe there will be a storm today. There was some thunder as I started this recording; it subsided for the moment, but I think it'll be back. Yes, yeah, so I'll get to sit on this balcony uh, today and. Um, and look out over the view, which I am going to show you when I launch the bomber. So I'm feeling good. At half time, poof, I was gonna feign a knee injury or, or, or an ankle, roll an ankle. So I could take the boots off and, uh, and, and sit on the bench. And, uh, but yeah, oh, um, I guess that's what this, sort of rides all about is just managing your effort uh, and trying to stay on top of uh, hydration um, and and yeah I fell behind um, as hard as I tried I fell behind yesterday and um, so that's something to watch just as a, a point for for those that um, uh, not as familiar with uh, riding long um, I, back home, I, I can ride 100 k's without even having breakfast. Now, my effort will peter um, if, if I haven't eaten. So generally back home, if I'm going to ride more than 100 kilometers, I make myself stop. If I eat breakfast and I stop and you know, have a coffee and a cake or something, you know, I've got more energy to burn. Uh, but if I had to, I can ride 120 kilometres without food. So what I'm doing here is I, I, I'm up and like I have been the last couple of days, I'm, I'm on the road by 5.30. I don't have breakfast. I don't need it because I'm not punching out the sort of effort that would require uh, that, that food. Um, if I start punching out effort that requ requires uh, the food, I'm not going to last all, uh, long enough. Uh, so I've been doing the videos around 10. Today was, I think, quarter to nine. Um, I'll generally stop then for some kind of a drink and I can't eat. I can't eat a hot meal. and My body just, just won't take it. I'm too hot. Uh, so normally it's a couple of Snickers or a cake. 
um, but normally a couple of Snickers or, or similar, maybe a flavoured uh, flavored drink, uh, a red Fanta, a bit of go juice. Uh, that's the sort of energy I need and even I'm finding even after the ride um, I really don't feel like eating until a couple hours after I've uh, finished riding. I'm too hot, my body's too hot. It needs fluid and uh, flavoured fluid is good because there's some sugar uh, coming back. Um, but I will generally have a, a, a good uh, evening meal. Maybe even like yesterday, an afternoon meal and an evening meal. Uh, but uh, I've got enough energy sort of stores um, that, yeah, I, I, I'm just not eating a lot and I'm not really feeling like eating a lot. Now I've spoken a lot, so I'm hoping I edit a chunk of this out. Um, as I record this, it's Easter Sunday, so happy Easter, everybody. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a great, great time uh, relaxing with family, friends. And hopefully I'll get to show you a bit of a tropical storm. And this is the place I'm staying at called the, called River Home. I believe it's very, very new. And uh, the town I'm staying in it at is uh, Pak Penang, and uh, you may see that written up on uh, upstairs. And it's on the Pak Penang River. Now I was offered uh, one of these downstairs rooms, which is fine for twenty-four dollars, but I've opted for upstairs. You'll know it's mine because it's got my clothes that I've washed, hand washed, and uh, they're on my makeshift line uh, drying. When you're bike touring, always bring some kind of line. You use it for all sorts of things like holding your bike up while you clean the running gear and drying your clothes. So that. That's where the neighbours are living. It's a pretty cool setup. Very cool setup. Little little bridge and a seat if I chose to sit there, which I don't. And the bike's uh, gonna be outside today. Although oh, it doesn't matter if it rains. Oh, in fact, I need to put a cover on the seat. I'll do that straight after this video. And now we've entered uh, my balcony. Here the old, the old clothesline. You can take that anywhere. And if we step inside, uh, there's two Two single beds, uh, I didn't uh, bother them to make up the uh, second one, they just made up the one against the wall. My gear carefully uh, placed on the floor. And this bathroom is worth a look at, uh, as, as is the case in uh, a lot of uh, Thai places. Uh, the shower's on the wall, but there is no screen. <laughs> you just wet the floor, and uh, behind the loo there is a uh, is a drain. But this is what you pay the big bucks for. This is why it's thirty-two dollars. That's not true. It's not thirty-two dollars. It's forty dollars. Forty dollars. Um, it was twenty-four dollars for downstairs and 40 for upstairs and it's the best $16 I think you could spend uh, in order to get this view. It's well covered so uh, if there is a big storm I can definitely sit out here and watch it. And I am a bit of a storm watcher so, uh, so that'll be good.
Well, I've just, uh, clearly I'm flying the drone and scared myself uh, a couple of times, uh, losing contact with the drone. But hopefully you've enjoyed uh, those couple of shots. I'm feeling really good. It's uh, nearly 1.30 and uh, to be honest, I feel like I haven't ridden. So I've obviously, uh, I'm on the recovery from, you yeah, know, just a flat, a flat start to the day. The storm is coming and the drone is being buffeted. So I'm about to land it. That's it for me today. <laughs>